All right. Hi, everyone. We Welcome back from your break. And we are here again with the lovely Morgan. And right now, she's going to talk to about talk to us about closing skill gaps and documenting strengths. Um, over to you, Morgan. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, hopefully, some of you were able to join us earlier this morning to actually hear about how can, you can use ATD's new talent development capability model to explore the critical knowledge and skills that talent development professionals um, need to know and things that they need to be able to do in order to be successful. And so um, we're going to kind of step on from that. Um, the first thing, of course, is to try to identify strengths and weaknesses. And you can do that in the ATD capability model. Um, the uh, I think we can chat out the website for that, um, which is td.org forward slash capability model, uh, which is kind of the landing page for all things about it. If you want to read about the back research, um, there's some job aids and things there. But then you can go in and access the model and actually perform your self-assessment. We're going to go out in a minute and take a look at that. Um, but that self-assessment and the capability model has open access. Uh, anyone is available to use it. You do not need ATD membership. Uh, you do need to create a TD.org login, um, but, but that's not membership. Anyone can have a login. And you need that login so that you can save your self-assessment and so that you can save the learning plan that we're going to talk about today. So we're really going to talk about um, how you identify uh, your strengths and weaknesses, and then how you can close those weaknesses gaps, um, but also how you can document some of your strengths. Um, I know that many people can't take their work with them when they move from one job to another due to proprietary concerns by companies. And so we have a little bit of a tool that can help you think about how to document uh, some of those skills that you uh, really excel at so that you have some of those examples right at your fingertips um, in an interview or when trying to, you know, pull together, update your resume and things like that. So from the self-assessment in the talent development capability model, you can go through that assessment. And again, it, it's not a psychometrically um, developed assessment it really acts as a barometer so if you spend the time to really take an, a, a reflective assessment of where your skill set lies uh, then the tool itself can help you create a learning plan to close those gaps that you identify and help you build your knowledge and skill set so after you complete the self-assessment the report function will give you uh, proficiency scores. It'll give you a proficiency score for the whole model. So this one whole model with its three domains of practice and 23 capability areas. It'll also uh, give you a score by domain of practice, a score by capability, uh, and then it'll also show you your capabilities in proficiency order so that you can see where your strengths are and, and what are the capabilities that you might need to work on developing. So just to kind of um, give yourself a, a sense of where you fall uh, and so that a lot of people don't panic because some people have said that going through that self-assessment process has been somewhat a humbling experience. Um, there are 186 uh, knowledge and skill statements uh, and we really do suggest that everyone go through and complete the entire self-assessment. Um, if you break it down by capability area, you can probably go through each capability and, or sorry, each domain of practice in 20 minutes. So it might take you an hour perhaps to go through the whole thing. And so when you get your final scores, uh, just to give you a sense of where you fall in the general scheme of things, um, we've had almost 8,000 talent development professionals complete the self-assessment to date. And the overall proficiency score for those folks is 51.1%. So the purpose of the proficiency scores isn't necessarily to get to 100% in every single capability, although that would be amazing. I think we probably all agree that, you know, learning never stops. And so there's always something that we can learn more about where we can deepen our knowledge or expand our skill set. <clears throat> so these proficiency scores are really there to just send a benchmark for you so that you can help move your own needle uh, in certain areas. And again, either deepen your knowledge and expand your skills in those things that are directly related um, to the job you might be doing uh, today or 
you know, also looking at what knowledge and skills might be needed for that next great job that, that you'd like to have. So overall proficiency scores, um, about 51.1%. And then here, if you look at the average scores by domain, probably no surprise, um, highest rated is are those personal capabilities. And those are those, you know, interpersonal skills that you use for in building engagement and trust, uh, things like communication and emotional intelligence, uh, lifelong learning, project management, cultural awareness and inclusion. Um, not surprising that talent development professionals would excel in these particular areas. Um, the middle domain, building professional capability, those are the core specialized talent development skills. So things uh, like instructional design, training, delivery, and facilitation. Um, evaluating impact. So how do you determine whether or not a learning solution was successful uh, outside of just whether it was well received, but did it did it change the behavior it needed to? Did it hit the bottom line? Did it reduce safety events, et cetera? Some of those kinds of things, um, knowledge management, technology application, again, all those sort of core talent development skills. And then kind of right behind it is impacting organizational capability. And this is where we find a lot of those strategic concepts uh, that fall into talent development, <clears throat> consulting and business partnering, talent strategy and management about really helping your organization to develop that talent pipeline. Um, again, business and, and co consulting really about being able to partner across different areas of the organization. Um, so here are things like performance management and things so again, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a picture of um, when you complete the self-assessment where you sort of fall on that spectrum. Also, just to give you a quick peek, um, again, when looking at the results of those 8,000 people, um, these are the top five capabilities that have been scored. This is globally, although when you break it down by US and rest of the world, it's pretty much the same. Um, so again, no surprise that the higher rated capabilities fall, they're green, so they fall into the personal capability domain. <clears throat> Training, delivery, and facilitation, um, obviously in that uh, professional domain area, one of the top rated ones. Uh, so most of the people coming to, to ATD to look for resources or to engage with the capability model are probably going to be involved in training in some respect. So it makes sense that that is highly rated. Bottom five, however, um, this is globally. Um, bottom of the barrel is data and analytics. Um, and, you know, this is some people may have organizations big enough that they have departments that do this for them, uh, but it's always important to understand some of those uh, statistical principles so that as you're building your learning solutions, you're thinking about what you're going to measure um, and how you're going to collect that information and report it out. Change management. This was a big surprise to me given the change that all of us have gone through over the past year, um, but it clearly shows that all of us could build our skill set in this area. And, you know, building your skills in change management might actually help reduce your stress level a little bit if you feel like you have a really good set of tools that can help you manage that both for yourself and for your organization. Technology application, of course, um, huge explosion, not just in, in how to use learning management systems, but how do we use all different other kinds of technology to accomplish what we need to do both for our learners and just for our day-to-day -day work? And how do we leverage those tools? How do we know when not to leverage those tools? Uh, so lots of room to grow here. Uh, talent strategy and management, again, working on that uh, talent pipeline, and then career and leadership development, which is kind of surprising because that's kind of what we do um, <clears throat> in general as talent development professionals, but this is specifically around helping others <clears throat> create a career path and move through that, as well as how to identify and develop um, those with leadership potential. So again, I provide these just to give you a little bit of benchmarking so that as you go through that self-assessment process, um, you can just kind of see how you compare to sort of the rest of uh, the world in terms of those scores. So how do you close your skill gaps? And I think the first thing is to look at addressing your biggest challenge. So identify your learning priorities. We all know that learning is more successful if it's intentional. And so 
really thinking about, okay, where does my skill set lie? And where do I think are the most important places for me to develop skills? And whether that's to develop a new set of skills to provide you with an expanded set of opportunities, whether it's a new job or putting a new perspective on things, um, or whether it's to um, deepen your knowledge and expand your skill set in an area that may already be what you feel is your area of expertise or is where your career path is, because there's always something more to, to learn and develop there. So that can seem overwhelming, particularly if you look at a capability model that has 23 areas and 186 knowledge and skill statements. But we're hoping to help you break that down into some actionable pieces, help you hold yourself accountable to working that plan, or you know, maybe if you share the plan with someone else, they can help you stay accountable. So one of the ways to do that is to create a personalized learning plan of key resources. And ATD has done this for you. Um, we're gonna help you identify your learning priorities through the self-assessment. And we're gonna hop out there in just a minute. But this is the kind of roll-up report where you, you will start. Once you complete your self-assessment, you'll see an overall score um, across the entire capability model. In this example, it's 44%. So just a little bit below that global average. And then we have the capability scores for each of the domains of practice. Um, and so again, you can see if, if you feel that developing your skills in one area versus another um, might be more beneficial to you. And then we're gonna go in and create a personalized learning plan. Um, based on those skill gaps or what you decide you want to develop. So we're going to actually hop out to um, ATD's interactive site and take a look at that. Okay, so here is the um, live version of the slide that you just saw. So this individual has completed their entire self-assessment, and you can see that down here because all of their skill assessed bars are full. Um, and so again, they kind of know where they lie. If they scroll down, you can actually see the capabilities in uh, descending order in terms of evaluating impact is uh, this individual's uh, biggest strength. And if you scroll down, you will see that technology application, compliance and ethical behavior, cultural awareness and inclusion, these are the things most lowest rated and those might be candidates for choosing uh, to develop skills, or you might find something where there, perhaps there's some low hanging fruit, maybe in communication or collaboration and leadership where you know that there's something that is a challenge for you. And so you decide you wanna dive in and develop that. So how do we do that? When you complete your self-assessment, this is on the My Report page um, of our tool. You come here and you will be invited to um, develop a learning plan. So we're going to click the learning plan button. And we're going to come over here. Um, you have a variety of different learning paths that you can go down. You can do a self-guided path, which literally is you're going to pick what you want to develop. Or if you are looking to pursue a professional certification, you can choose either our APTD or our CPTD credential. And what this is going to do is take your self-assessment scores and measure those against the ideal proficiency scores for people who might choose to pursue one of those credentials. And it's gonna show you specifically which knowledge and skill statements you have a gap in, and then is gonna suggest resources from ATD to help you close those gaps. So if you don't wanna wing it and kind of have a choose your own adventure, and you don't wanna pursue certification yet, you can choose a development path based on a job role, that has been curated by our education team. Um, and so you can, let's see, we'll choose a coaching path. You choose your learning path. And then we're gonna go over to the learning resource tab and it's actually gonna show us where we have knowledge and skill gaps. So here in personal capability, let's look at cultural awareness and inclusion. It's showing me that I have three knowledge and skill statements where I have a gap. It's showing me what my current proficiency score was and what the target score is. So you can see where those gaps are. You can then click on this resource carrot 
and you're going to see resources from ATD that are going to help you develop your knowledge and skills in cultural awareness and inclusion. You can filter this list of resources um, by all different kinds of ATD resources, depending on your time, your budget, how you feel you will learn best. Um, and it will filter if you just want to see books or just want to see tools and templates, just want to see courses. But when you come, you can um, look and see details um, about a particular resource. Uh, this looks like it is a blog that you can read. You can simply click this box and add it to your plan. We're going to choose this uh, TD at Work. That's our tool and template collection. And then we're going to also choose a, choose a course, presentation skills certificate. So we've added things to our plan. We're going over to this last tab. And now we're going to actually see our learning plan. We now see those things that we added to our learning plan. You can then drag these things up here to up next. And we kind of recommend that people drag things into that up next, maybe on a quarterly basis. So you can, you know, add 10, 12, 15 things to your learning plan, organize them, drag them up to the up next. Uh, so that again, you can help hold yourself accountable, or you can have someone else help you stay accountable to all of that. When you finish that activity, you can come back here and click this completed box, and it's going to invite you to update the assessment. So that again, you can continue to move your needle on knowledge and skills. Um, I know we started a little bit late and I'm talking really fast, um, but I am going to jump over um, and just give you a couple other potential tools for um, closing some skill gaps um, for you. Sorry here. <clears throat> So another way to do this um, is to use a Lotus diagram. And I know that our keynote speaker, Catherine, this morning um, actually mentioned using Lotus diagrams. So this is, um, while it seems crazy, it took a while for me to wrap my brain around this. You can learn more about this at Langford Learning, uh, which is langfordlearning.com. But this is a way for you to actually um, start to break down uh, things in a more consumable way. So if we look at this example I've done, I took future readiness, which is one of our capability areas, and I put that in the box in the middle. And then I actually paraphrased all of the knowledge and skill statements from that capability, broke them down here. And then you take the skill statement and move it up here. So if <clears throat> I know that I need to develop my skills in future readiness, these are the knowledge and skills that I need to develop that are kind of around that box in the middle. I move one up here, constant environmental scanning. How can I develop my skills there? I can read industry research reports. That's a way to do some environmental scanning. I can use a SWOT analysis to look at my talent development function uh, versus the capability model in terms of using that as sort of the ultimate function and how do we measure up. I can interview other individuals in the industry about trends and things that they see. Um, so again, starting to break down how I can perform or learn how to do environmental scanning into smaller pieces. If you look over here, fostering innovative practices, that's another knowledge and skill statement from future readiness. Um, break that down here um, and start thinking about ways that you can help you or your team foster innovative practices. So you can go over here and read one of ATD Press's book, Shock of the New. Great book, um, really helps you kind of switch up your thinking on things. You could read some white papers or research reports. You could try to use design thinking when you're developing learning resources or create a sandbox for your staff. So this is just a way for you to actually break down topics that might seem overwhelming into, um, again, more actionable things. And we know that, you know, 67% of learning leaders say that lifelong learners drive engagement within an organization. So being able to, you know, sort of self-motivate and, and break down those skill sets are important. And it's also a way that if you were in an interview or something, you can then articulate uh, to a future employer, not only how you do that for yourself, but how you might help a team do it. And last but not least, so we've talked about a couple ways to close skill gaps. How can we actually document your strengths? Um, we know that documenting strengths is important. Many of you um, can't take your portfolios with you because you've designed training solutions that are proprietary. 
So, you know, how, how can we, how can we do that? And we kind of have a, um, a possible solution for you here. Um, you can use this. This is based on David Langford's capacity matrix. You can kind of put the capability area on the left here. I've kind of done an example. Put the skill, knowledge and skills down um, in the breakdown. Kind of indicate your proficiency level and then actually write out for yourself what are some of the specific examples of why you think you actually are um, advanced at a particular knowledge or skill? Uh, and so, you know, breaking down those examples and actually putting in, you know, I did this, um, it resulted in, in fewer safety events. It, you know, you can actually start to spell that out. So in an interview, you have those things at your fingertips and maybe look particularly at those areas that are hard to articulate. It's certainly easy as an instructional designer to be able to talk about a learning solution you designed, but what about being a, a great team member or, or things like that? So giving some thought to that. And I think that's the sound that we're over time. I see that someone asked a question about creating a learning plan. Yes, the entire model is free. Um, again, you do need a td.org login to do that self-assessment and create the learning plan, but you do not need to be a member um, to create that profile, just like creating a profile on Pinterest or something. So um, hopefully this will help you um, kind of bridge those gaps for you and, and give some thought to documenting your strengths. Thanks, Morgan. Um, <laughs> And thanks everyone for being here. I can see a lot of activity on the chat and I love the way everyone wants to jump in and help each other. And I was just, you know, reminiscing the time when I just started off in L and D and I wish I had access to so much <laughs> of these resources, but Hey, you know, like somebody said, there's a lot of uh, reading and uh, all this information was uh, very, very helpful. Um, oh, I think Jennifer's popped in as well. I am. Hi. I'm so um, glad that I got to part of this. So I know that we are over. Um, so hopefully we can we can get these resources out to everybody. So I'm gonna um, we'll go ahead and end this session. And I think Ken Phillips is gonna talk a little bit more in his session coming up right now. Of, yeah. You know, kind of continuing this conversation. So thanks, Morgan. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for Thank you. stopping by. Bye. <laughs> Bye.